Hello, I'm William Devine, CDT, and I'm the Senior Technical Support Representative for the Whitmix Corporation. Today I'll be discussing the Mainstay Disposable Articulator System. The system is available in four options. The pin quadrant, the pinless quadrant, the pin anterior, the pin full arch, as well as accepting the Mainstay single pins and the support rods. Today for our demonstration we'll be using the pin quadrant version. The items needed for the demonstration will be an impression, mainstay pins, support rods, two quadrant sections, a clean mixing bowl, die stone of choice, some distilled water, some surfactant if desired, mainstays glue, mainstay accelerator, some silicone model release agent, a sharpie pen, cotton roll, a Bard Parker, a mixing spatula, an arbor band mounted, a torch, and a die saw. If you notice, the sections are both the same, but once you snap them together, they become mirror images of one another. The next step will be to trim our disinfected impression. trying to achieve is to get a flat land area so we can mark where we're going to place our pins. That will allow us to make the marks where we need for our removable dies. Now I'm going to mark the impression where I'm going to place the pins. Our prepped tooth adjacent tooth, and then the extension of the other two teeth. And I'll go to the opposing arch. Essentially two pins will be sufficient to hold your opposing arch in place. So I'll only place two pins there. And it doesn't have to coincide with exactly where the tooth is because nothing's going to be sawed out at this point. The next step is to mark our articulator where we want the pins to rest in our impression. And remember, we're wanting to get it roughly in the same position. It's not going to be exact every time, but that gives us an idea of where the pins should fall from the articulator translated to the impression. Next, I'm going to insert the mainstay pins in the corresponding holes that we marked on the articulator section. Just give it a gentle push to firmly seat the pin. Now with the pins firmly in place, we want to verify that they fall exactly where we marked on the impression. Now we're going to spray both sections of the articulator with silicone release agent. Everywhere that stone will be contacting, just a light coating of silicone spray. Now it's time to mix our dye stone. Pour in the appropriate amount of water. Pour in our stone. and incorporate to get it started. And vacuum mix. Now that the stone is mixed, it's time to pour our impression.
put sufficient stone in the impression to give us enough bulk for one of the arches. Now we want to place enough stone on the articulator section to cover the pins. Now that we have sufficient body, it's time to introduce the impression to the articulator, making sure to line the pins with the marks on the impression. Note that the markings are lined up and note also that the opposing arch pins are going down and following the central sulcus of the opposing impression. Now that the working side is mounted, it's time to mount the opposing side. We've mounted the opposing arch in the same fashion as the working arch. Note that we've waited one hour minimum time after the opposing arch to allow adequate set for the stone. Now it's time to separate our articulator sections from the impression. Just simply pull gently on both sides. The trimming process will be easier if both sections of the articulator are separated. Just gently put it on the table and pull. Now we're ready to begin the trimming process. trimmed, we're able to put the two sections back together, placing them on the table and clicking them together like so. Now we can move on to the die sawing process. Now it's time to remove each section from the articulator. Just give a gentle pull and it should come loose, like so. Before we begin the die trimming process on the working side, you may want to use a cotton roll under each, uh, each section where you're going to be doing sawing to avoid sawing into the articulator itself. Simply place it where you're going to be making your saw mark, put the section back down, and now you're ready to saw out your die. Cotton roll can be removed. We preserve the surface of our uh, articulator. Now it's time to trim the die. Now we can bulk trim the dies in the normal fashion.
Occasionally you may find the occlusion is open on your articulator. If necessary, you may want to soften the hinge sections of the articulator to finagle and close the occlusion. Simply take your torch, heat up the arm support for the articulator, where you want to move the articulator. And cool the section. Please note, you don't want to hint, uh, heat the actual hinge itself, just the support arm. Now our pins are completely down. If, however, you find the occlusion open, it may be necessary to use one of the support rods to create a vertical stop. To do this, you simply break off the pins Locate the tracks in the back where you want to put your support rod. Doesn't matter which section you uh, adhere it to. Notice that the rod will slide into the uh, cutout groove and goes flat up against the opposing section. Now we're ready to glue it into place. You may want to spray a little accelerator. This will harden the glue instantly. With our support rod in place, now we've created a new vertical stop. The case is ready for fabrication. Thanks for watching. I'm William Devine, CDT, Whitmix Corporation.